Cairo, Seattle. It's time to get school. Welcome to with school the with the professor. Sean and Clayton. boy, I tell you, it's kind of sad when you see great players that no longer are going to stay in the game. And I tell you, one of the greatest return guys in the history of the game is Devin Hester, and he joins us on Schooled with the Professor. But Devin, before we get back into your great career with the 19 returns for touchdowns on and that, what what I want to get into more than anything else is what's going on in the National Football League on May 1st and May 2nd. There's going to be an NFL Summit, and one of the things that they're discussing Discussing and maybe leaning to do is eliminate kickoff returns. Devin, can, well, the impact of the game, because again, you brought so much excitement, Hall of Fame type excitement with returns. What's the NFL going to be like without kickoff returns? My first question is, what's the purpose of it? You know, are they trying to eliminate injuries? I guess that could be the, the reason why, but the game without kickoff return, you know, is, is like one of the most exciting plays during the game when you get a, even not even a, a touchdown but a big return to set up a field goal that could win the game. I mean, that's like telling guys on offense you can't go deep. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Yeah, and obviously, I mean, the the idea is that they still see, even though they've cut down on the number of kickoff returns with the spotting of the ball at the 35-yard line and the increased number of touchbacks, but they still say the con- the concussion level is still higher than any other play. But also, again, just like you bring up very uh, adaptly, is that, hey, uh, you know, this is you can't prevent injuries in the National Football League. Football is a physical game. You can try to minimize it, but you can't prevent it. Right. I, I think you can minimize. I mean, to be honest, I don't think kickoff return is what's causing what, where the majority of the concussion is because as a re, of the former returner, I don't even remember getting hit hard on kickoff or punt return. My hardest hits came from offense. So when you sit there and, you, and, and for a guy like me that did it my whole life, my hardest hits came on offense. I was defense trying to go up and make a title. I never really got or can recall getting hit hard while with days or anything on kick off a point return. So for a returner like myself that did it my whole life, I, I disagree with the voting that they have with that situation. Now, you came into the National Football League in 2006. You had four kickoff returns for touchdowns in your first two years. And uh, obviously, that's how you got really started and then morphed your way into good roles as a, uh, as a wide receiver. If you were coming into the league in 2019... Would you worry that you might not be able to get a, a chance? Because, again, the kickoffs were so important for you to kind of get started in establishing yourself. What would happen to Devin Hester in a 2019 with no kickoff returns? That's a big question, you know, it, and it comes down to, you know, whether or not they're going to get rid of Because at the end of the day, you can have the best mechanic building a Ford car. But now that they're coming up with all this machinery, now you never know who that mechanic what could be. You know how that car builder could be because in these cars dealerships now they have machines to build a car. So I mean, at the end of the day, it's like you're really taking jobs away from guys that been doing it their whole life and is good at it. Well, and, and the other thing it uh, does, it affects the kickers because now the kickers aren't going to be doing the kickoffs. And I mean, you've watched it through the years where uh, you know you come in and you have the the regular guy that does the field goals, uh, the kicker does that, or then eventually maybe it's the punter that does that. But now there's not going to be any kickoffs. I mean, really, all you have now is the kickers out there just kicking extra points from the 15 and field goals. It affects them too. Right, and I got another question. So. What happens when a team scores and they're down three points with 30 seconds left and going to the game? Would they allow them to kick onside kicks? So that eliminates onside kicks then. Pretty much, yeah. So in fact, what the team is down... <laughs> One of the things they were doing at the owners' meeting when they brought this up was talking about the idea if you do need an onside kick, you basically have to tell the team it's going to be an onside kick so they can at least be ready for it, which, of course, takes that element of surprise out and probably eliminates any chance of success for an onside kick. That's why you know you look at this and you say, okay, uh, you're really taking a lot out of the game. Right. So my question is, okay, now that I'm thinking about it, they're taking all kickoff returns, right? right. So when the team scores, they're just going to put the team on the 20-yard line or the 25-yard, however that goes, mm-hmm, and then play from there? Yeah, put, put, put it on the and 25. So, and then, so how could you come to the conclusion to say, well, let us try to kick an onside kick and bring the kickoff unit out there? Like, I don't see how that's going to play a factor in the game, though. Like, if you every time a team scores, you put them at the 25-yard or 20-yard line, but now you need the ball back. You say, wait, 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 wait. Could we, could we put, instead of putting them at 25 yards, could we try to do an onside kick to try to get the ball back? Mm-hmm. Like, that's, 
that's going to be a weird situation in the game. Like, if you're taking away kickoff returns. Right. Oh, no, like, no, no question. Not, yeah, that's 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 what's so weird about the the way that they're going to. And again, they're going to have the two day summit May first and May second in New York City to discuss it. But I mean, right. you kind of get the idea that their minds are starting to be made up. As long as those numbers on uh, concussion stay to whatever it is for all the players on kickoffs and the coverage and that, then you know they're probably going in that direction. And and you just think about the excitement that's going to be missing from the game of football. Right, and I mean, I wonder how they come up with the the count of how many players get concussions, like on kickoff return, like like I I really want to see the numbers of when you come off the field on on kickoff return as a kickoff unit coverage, a coverage unit, as well as a return unit. Who comes out with the concussion, and how do they keep count of that? It's just where, because at the end of the day, I feel the majority of the concussion comes on offense and defense. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, now you're taking away jobs for guys that play special teams. What about the kickoff unit? You got the L1, the L2, the guys that, that, that played 10, 11 years as a kickoff unit cover guy, and, you know, a corner, a block on punt return. I mean, sorry, not punt return, but a great block on kickoff return. You eliminate those guys as well. You're right. I mean, those guys that become just good special teams players, you know, they lose it. I know Matt Slater, who's one of the best maybe, uh, you know, at least in this generation for the New England Patriots. I mean, he he just shakes his head at that idea because, again, you know, it's like you're really affecting a lot of different jobs and a lot of different opportunities and a lot of opportunities to guys to grow. Take us through the 11 years of your returns and just how the game, how they try to change the game. Because remember, they took away the wedge, uh, trying to eliminate that. They felt that was a little bit too physical. Take us through the 11 years of you're sitting back there, you're at the goal line, you're waiting for the kickoff, and how the game changed with some of the rules and how that affected you. That affected me a whole lot because then it really played in the the opponent hands. Because after my first year, they – they already didn't want to kick to me. Now you said you're taking away the wedge. Then after you take away the wedge, you move and kick off to closer to for the kicker team to really just kick out of bounds. You know, kick it deep in the end zone. It, it was a no-brainer with that situation. Now I already struggled trying to kick it in the end zone. And then you move it up, you know, an extra 10 yards or whatever it may be. Now it's like it's so easy. To get, I mean, kicker not kicking field goals on kickoff return. I mean, it's just it's really taking away the, the, the game. I mean, the way the system, the way it's looking now, in maybe five, ten years, guys will be playing without helmets and no shoulder pads. We'll be flagged. Mm-hmm. That's the way they're trying to. That's, that's the way it looks like the NFL is going into. Yeah, I mean, for safety, and obviously safety is a big issue, but then uh, if you take away too much from the game, then the game suffers. When uh, you, because again, you were so good at doing this, when you sat in your special teams meetings and the special teams coach got up there and it was talking about field position, and again, you being one of the greatest, if not the greatest ever, what did you usually figure that you would be able to give the offense the ball with your returns on the average? My mentality and our mentality at special team and while we were in the meetings was, if we can have our special team kick off return game so good that to put points on the board, we all we need is one first down, and that was our mentality. If, if, if we can be so dominant on this return game, then we will get we will let our offense have a, a easy chance. All they need is one first down, and now we're in field goal range. So, our, so, so that would be what uh, toward the fifty yard line. If you could get the ball to the fifty or the opponent's forty five. Right. Exactly. It was getting us a field goal right. All we need is one or two field, one or two first downs, and we're we're automatic a guarantee of three points. Especially with the kicker we had, we had a great kick, Robbie Gold. So he was like, "D, you know, if you can get me to the forty-five yard, at least the forty-yard line, you know, with the one first down, you know, I'm good as gold." And that was our mentality. And that's why we were so good in Chicago because we had a great defense and our return game was so strong that it picked up the weight the, the weight of any help that the offense needs to put points on the board. Yeah, and, and that's what was so uh, so great about it because you're, you're right. That's what I was going to bring up the idea on the defense because the defense wasn't going to allow too much, and here you are getting great field position for the offense, setting up the quarterback just to you know get that first down or two, get uh, at least a field goal. And you know it's like through your career, I mean, you've had years where you've had five 40-yard returns, did that a couple times. I mean, I love the one year, what, 2013, even though that game wasn't with the great Bears defense. You had 43 returns, 20 yards or more, but you know you were consistently. I mean, it's like if you were a Bear 
offensive quarterback, you didn't have to worry about getting the ball between the 20 and 25. You were going to get it way past that. Exactly, man. And, and, and the way our return game was, we knew that as a whole unit, as a team, that, listen, if these guys kicked us, we had good field position. And that was pretty much guaranteed coming from our return game. What made you such a great returner? It, it's, it's not only me. It was uh, it was the group of guys I was around. Um, you know, you know the the vision, the speed, um, to be to have the ability to set up blocks. But at the end of the day, you know, Coach Day told one of the best special team coach I ever been around. Scheme and studied our opponents like day and night, and, and made it so much easier for us, you know, as a unit to go out there and pick the the weak link and and to to minimize the best person on there, the the opponent's team, to minimize him to, from making plays and. We just went out there and played, and we had so much confidence. No doubt. But, of course, I mean, when you first came into the league, I'm sure a lot of it just had to be athletic ability and instincts because, again, you're breaking 96, 97-yard returns. I mean, four big returns in your rookie season. I mean, did, was it that you immediately were able to get the study down to know what to do? Because, again, when was that transition, or did you just come in, you just kind of knew how to follow this? Right. It was, it was the unit we had, but, of course, the opportunities, You know, the didn't nobody really know of me uh, coming into the league besides some of the returns I had in Miami. So the opportunity was there. The, the kicks right down the middle of the field. Um, kicking in at the four or five yard line on kickoff return. The opportunity was given to me. And when they realized how dangerous our special team was, now they start blooping punts. You know, my second year, they start blooping them. Kicking them towards the sideline, pinning me in the sideline, kicking it out of bounds. On kickoff return, they squibbing them. You know, um, kicking them out of bounds and that what really hurt the, my my return career towards the end of you know after my first two years because teams realized how dangerous we were on a special team and so the opportunity was 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 cut more than half how much fun is it to take a ball at the goal line now or at the two three yard line and just kind of weave through the field like that what kind of feeling is that it's it's, it's amazing feeling when you have a uh, great special team coach as well as teammates to, to make the job easy. And all you have to do is make one or two guys miss. And uh, at the end of the day, knowing that you, you were probably the fastest one out there on the field at that time. <laughs> hey, as you watch the game now, what what kickoff return guys do you really respect? I like Ty Hill. I think he's in a situation again. Once again, he's with Dave Toll. And when I say Dave Toll, the best special team coach I ever played with or ever heard of. He's with Dave Tove, and Dave Tove is, is really doing a great job with him. And at the end of the day, this kid is, is blazing fast. So that makes it even easier for the returns of the pop every time you touch the ball. So what happens now next for Devin Hester? Now that you've retired, what are you going to do? Uh, the first two or three years, man, I'm just really just, just playing makeup with the family. You know, I miss, you know, my whole life, all I knew was football. All season and season, the breaks we had before OTAs, I constantly grind and made sure that I was up in top shape before we got OTAs. So I really didn't get a chance to spend much time with my family. My mom would always ask me when I'm coming home. I would go in for about one or two days and I'm gone. You know, the the, the dedication that I put in football, you know, it, it was it was year-round for me. And now I'm married. I have three kids, three boys. Man, it's like, man, I really, really got to focus on my family. So my first three years, first two, three years, I'm I'm family, man. I'm doing I'm not doing anything but spending time with the family. Well, I know the one thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to get the family mad at me because I know you got to get back to them. Devin Hester, congratulations on a great career. Best of luck after football, and we sure enjoyed watching those returns. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. And that does it for this week's podcast. In between episodes, you can follow me on Twitter at Clayton ESPN. If you enjoy these weekly one-on-one conversations, consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to the show. Thanks for listening. See you next time on Schooled with a Professor.